Good morning, a wonderful morning with the sun in my face. Ah, today we're gonna do something a little bit different than what I usually do on this channel. Today I'm gonna hack myself. Because you know how much I like hacking challenges. I create them myself in the game of death. But today we're gonna hack ourselves because Ottersek came out with a challenge. I was at their workshop yesterday and they talked about Solana security basics and they put out a capture the flag challengey thingy and I just want to do it and I'm going to film myself doing it and then if I when I solved it I'm going to show you how it's done only after the challenge ended of course because we don't want to spoil it for anyone anyway I'm gonna hide down here and check out my Twitter. Twitter, hello. Ultrasec, there you go. Ah, there you go, introducing our first CTF challenge. The ISTM list. ISTM.autosec.io, let's go. So, it's pretty cool, cause the first place is $600. Oh, there are places? God damn it. It's like a proper capture the flag. All right, so, I mean, we don't need to win any of that. We're just here for the learning, but it's cool that there are prizes. I need to have prizes for the game of death as well. Anyway, so we're setting New Year's resolutions. They wrote a program where you can make a list, you can create, edit, write, and then seal the resolutions and secure it on the blockchain, making them immutable. That's the idea of the list and there's probably some security bug in there. So let's have a look at this. Welcome to the first I swear to myself list. ISTM. I swear to myself, I'm gonna fix this challenge. So we can create a list. Publius Victimus. <laughs> a public victim. There is not even like any source code here, no? Should we try out the thing or should we first Google what the Publicus Victimus account does not exist. So the wallet doesn't exist, but it has transactions. A day ago, unknown program, TTXR. And that seems to be the program that we want to hack. 36 sol are put into here. Maybe it got hacked. Okay. So do we have source code for this? So it's not much activity on that program yet. There's literally not a lot of activity on this. This was just a deploy, okay. Aha, uh -huh. there we have a fund transfer from here to here. And it created something. I don't know where that transfer comes from though. Create account with that amount of soul? Wow. And that's just a normal create a list. 0 0.3 for 46 bytes is expensive though. They are putting too much rent there. Yeah, so those were them. And then those two could still be interesting because they are within the challenge. Maybe that's where it was already hacked because here somebody has gotten, has gotten 36 sol out. Maybe I'm already too late. It has already been hacked. Create account with 0 0.3. Then he puts this thing always here. Is 36 sol $600? That could be right. Maybe that's already the price. Let's say it was 16. Yeah. That was already the price. Um, we could also be like calculating with current prices, then it would already be $800. But yeah, I think that's the price and I think the price was claimed by this guy in this transaction because it's a capture the flag. I think it's, we already lost. And essentially has put the same account, probably a missing owner check or something because it just creates an account with 32 bytes, oh no, and assigns it to that program. So it owns it now. 
Then he puts in an account one, two, three, four, five, six, eight is his wallet and nine is where the money goes. That's just a normal create one. There he just has account one, two, three, four. Ah, maybe there's just no check for which, who created that. Because here's always this one, this one, this one, this one. Maybe it's a missing signer check because the FY, FY in the exploited transaction, this one is here. And this one still has 0 0.3 sol in there. Yeah, without seeing the program, I'd, it's gonna be tough. Nice recent block hash for ages. So note to myself, if I participate in a capture the flag, time is critical because you do want to be first. But then, I mean, I also still wouldn't know how I would do anything. If I just have this page, no source code, how the hell should I know what I can do with the program? So I guess this is above my level of understanding how to hack contracts. If I have just the on-chain stuff, that's still too difficult for me. But the Publius Victimus is funny. <laughs> Fine as Nigelaus. In the transaction where he steals it, he steals the entire thing. And that's the Publicus Victimus, right? Yeah, that's the Publicus Victimus. If I would see the program, I could probably see it. And I guess after 41 minutes of just looking at this, I'll give up. Oh, look at that. Looks like they tested the solution before pushing to mainnet. There's still a couple of accounts with 0 0.3 sol on mainnet that can be drained. Okay, so he also did it without source code and he also used a lot of magic. Okay, I think I should go away from Twitter. Because this is usually how it ends, I just scroll through Twitter. Alright, welcome back to continuing with this challenge. It's been a while. I did not manage to find the source code yet, but I got some pointers. Yeah, I asked, is the source code available? And they said, yes, but not for bots, humans only. And I was like, what the hell does that mean? We should access what only humans can and bots cannot. And I was like, I have no idea. I did not ask chat GPT because I'm not that mainstream. So here I find myself and with a few pointers, I think I'll get to the source code. Where is it? Ha 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 ha. Okay. <clears throat> I think I just don't have enough capture the flag background that I would have the idea myself to look that up. But there the robot TXT says this allow backup zip. So that's something that should not be indexed. So if we go to backup zip and download a zip file that just so happens to have stuff. Oh, and that looks a lot like, yep, that looks a lot like a program. Let's open this. There we go. That's what I, that's where I wanted to go. That's nice. So this is our program ID. I think that was the same as we analyzed last time. My memory is not good, but I think that was it. Yes. So we've got some, but yeah, that's definitely the program. That is definitely the program with the list, create, edit, complete, seal. Okay. And we have the source code so we can actually analyze what's going on. Yes. Score. My green screen is not so good here. So let's see what's happening here. We have an enum for operations, create, edit, complete seal there we write all of those okay overwrite the fmt display to get this sort of a output yep that's that output um what else is here handle operations is probably what the entry point then calls all right this is an anchor program so so essentially there's just one instruction really create list context which just takes one signer 
and operations as a vector of bytes. But we then use remaining accounts. So we use remaining accounts that is more than just the user of we just use remaining accounts and we don't really check them. So remaining accounts is less than operators. So the operators we drive from slice is just a vector of operations. And the operation can be this, 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 and this. And there we also deserialize that part. I see. So these things will be relevant later. Okay. And then it just goes to the handle operations. All right, cool. Now let's analyze what the handles oper handle operation does. So we have the accounts, which is just the remaining accounts. So we don't really check them. Though we are using anchor, we did not properly specify all the accounts that we need here. We just need one signer. So the first one needs to be a signer, but then we just use the remaining accounts. So like all of the accounts like this, like that's not very safe, hint, hint. Then we just treat them as account infos. Then we iterate over them as we do it in native Rust. So for each operation, we get the next account as the list. So which list we want to edit or, you know, work with. And if it's not one of our accounts, so we do do an owner check. So it needs to be one of our accounts. Then we already an error. We match the operation and that's the different operations that there are. And in the end, just, okay. Okay. So create 32 bytes. If it is already, I think that means if the header is already written, then we throw an error. Otherwise we copy those bytes. So just static bytes into that data, just some static bytes. That means create. Okay. How big is an account that we have here on the list? 32 bytes. Then edit, edit must have the create before, because we now check that the signature is the same as we've written up here, then we reallocate, not entirely sure what that does, but I assume it just changes the size of the account, the realloc, you know, make it bigger than those 32 bytes, the alloc to the size that we want. So that just edits the size list. You are an account info, right? account info has a realloc, the new length and zero in it. So if you overwrite it with zeros, that's false. Okay, right. So we just call one realloc with a new size and we don't initialize it with zeros. Okay, then the operation complete that writes some data to some offset, I would assume. So we check that the header is again the same, offset is less than 0x2, which is 32 bytes again, hex, 2 times 16, because that's hex 32. So the offset cannot be less than 32, because we don't want to write into this begin signature. And the offset can also not be larger, offset plus what we want to write can't be larger than how much space we have, that also makes sense. And then we just borrow this and we slice it from the offset to the offset plus the data length. Yes. And then we just copy the data. Okay. So there we just write some data to a specific offset, some bytes, I guess this data was bytes. Yes. It's a vector of bytes. We just write whatever uh, onto a specific offset into our account. Okay. Then we seal the whole thing. We once again check the signature and then, aha, then we overwrite the begin signature with the end signature, which then means it's sealed. 
because only if it's the begin signature can we change the list. Okay, so that's the normal usage explained. Now, how can we exploit that whole thing? And mainly why can we exploit that whole thing? Already the one thing that I saw is that this remaining accounts is never checked what it is. There are owner checks on that account. They must be owned by the program. But other than that, there's not much there. Now the question is, how do we ever get something out? Because the goal was to get some sol out. And there is no real sol transfers anywhere in this program. The one thing that I can imagine happening is that the realloc automatically also transfers enough sol there for the new size. And also if we realloc it to a lower size, that it then just moves the sol away. Let's really read what's happening here in this realloc function. If within the same call a program reallocs from larger to smaller and back to larger again, the new space could contain stale data. This, this is one thing that could cause problems here. Pass true to zero in it in this case. And we pass false, so we don't zero in it. So if I largen the account and then shrink it again, and then in the same transaction, largen it again, then there is the same data as before. I think that's part of this exploit because otherwise it's zero initialized anyway, because on default it's zero initialized anyway, because we need to be deterministic on Solana. We can't just have random data in the account because it needs to be the same random data on all the validators. Safety, this method, this method makes assumptions about the layout. It should only be called on instances of account info that were created by the runtime. I mean, yes, kinda it was. We didn't create our account info ourselves. So I guess that's not the issue. Let's have a look at the source. Does it do anything with Sol? Yes, I'm pretty sure that the exploit comes from this zero init, from not zero initing if we use the realloc several times. Let's look on the explorer, how the exploit happened. Fetched full history, that's it. Nobody else tried to exploit it anymore. There, that was the transaction that exploited the whole thing because we have some guy getting 36 sol and this thing, which used to be owned by, yeah, that account was cleared. Maybe they did a realloc to zero, could that be? And that's what he did. He passed in that account several times. Then once the one he exploited and once this one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine accounts. That's the instruction data. And we have seven. That's a normal one with one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So five accounts where the first is the signer. We create the account first and then we call the program. I think the signer is taken out and then the remaining ones are the, the remaining account. So this thing is taken out as the user and then those four are the remaining accounts and those remaining accounts for each operation, he just takes the next account. So for each operation, we need to put in the, the same account again, if we were to do a create, edit, complete and seal on the same list, like we do here, then we need to put in the same account all the time. Okay. We could now analyze the instruction data because the instruction data will have first which function to call. So that will be a, the create list and anchor does that I think with a 32 byte prefix or something. It hashes global hashtag function name and then takes the, thir the, the 32 first bytes of that hash to define which 
function to call. I, th I think something like that. So that would be this here, the first stuff, because that kind of looks like some random stuff. So wait, that's, wait, no, how many bytes are that? Two hex digits are how many bytes? One byte, right? Something like global hashtag. I don't know what I'm searching for. Ah, it's not a hashtag, it's a double point. So global test function, the namespace, and the namespace is usually global if you don't specify anything else, and then the name of the function. And then how many bytes? Eight bytes. Okay, Anchor expects the first eight bytes. Okay, so just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that makes sense. So those first eight bytes, they are used for the instruction. So which function to call? Cool. So that's just a hash. That's just whatever. We just use the same data all the time. We can, of course, in order to prove that this is, that if you want to learn that, let's take this detour and perform a, let's perform a quick hash. And the input is global double point and then create list. That's the hash and I want the hash to be, wait, that's already in hex. So that's, 92, 91, 4B, B, A, is that the same as here? 92, 91, 4B, B, A, so that's exactly that. There we go, ha, nice. We, we know what we're doing, or we know what's happening. So those four, uh, the, those eight bytes are just this stuff until here. And the rest is ignored, just the first eight bytes are taken. That makes sense so far? Okay, so that's that part of the instruction data. Then comes, a 2a probably now we need to analyze how those operations so the enum works i think it's a u32 i would imagine an enum uses a u32 to um distinguish between those so the first thing that comes is a create but what i do see is the 0, 01 0, 02 i mean not like I need to understand everything for that exploit. I just want to understand everything that's happening here because I want to learn. I'm not here to exploit it really. I mean, I'm also here to do that, but mainly I'm here to learn. So I want to understand. Seal takes nothing and is the three. So I think that last instruction data, the 03 is the seal. That makes sense because zero, one, two, three. So that would be zero, three, as the enum. So maybe it just takes one byte. Can we Google that? Rust is smart enough to allocate space with minimum requirements. It's up to the compiler. God damn it, Rust. We have a zero two. Somehow we see that. And there is a zero zero somewhere, lore. Um, but probably this zero zero is the, yeah, 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 yeah. that zero zero is the first instruction. Now, my question is still, what is those eight bytes? There are still eight bytes for something that I am not sure where they come from. Maybe the number of operations, wait, we pass what exactly? A vector, a vector of operations. So the vector has a size, that thing. Those four bytes are the length of the vector so the number of operations. So we have four operations being this one. That's the first one. Then zero one, that's the second one. Then this one, that's the edit one, that's the longest. And that's the fourth one. So those are the four operations. And that's just the length of the vector of operations. So if we look at the attack thing that should then have a length of, I don't know, six or seven, whatever he did. This one, there he has one, two, three, four, five, six. So the le vector length should be six, yes, okay. And this thing also changed. Or oh, is that just the length of the string itself? Do we treat that as a string? Yeah, because that itself is also a vector. And again, a vector has the length of itself as the first four bytes. So that is the length of the entire thing. So th that just means there are now 42 more bytes and those are the 42 more bytes. Uh, 42, uh, 
hex that should be 66 more bytes. So those should be 66 bytes. 32, 64, 66, yes. Boom, 66 bytes. And this one would be 32 plus 10, so 42, that's the 42, 2a is the 42. So this would be 16, 32, 33, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40, 41, 42. Yeah, I know where this all comes from. Okay, so this is just the length of the vector that we passed in. This one. This is the length of the vector of the operations. So how many operations we have? This one. And then those are the individual operations with the identifiers. So first zero, zero, that's the operation create here. That's zero, zero. Then comes zero, one, edit, zero, one, edit. And the next 16 bytes, no, wait, eight byte. The next eight bytes are for the size. So that's the size. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the size for the edit. So we edited to 32 plus 14. Man, I'm so bad. 46. So we edit the size to 46. Then the next thing is the complete. So that would be the zero two. Zero two is the complete, which takes the offset and the offset is just 20. So directly after the begin signature, we write directly there and we have still eight bytes for the offset. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the offset. And then here comes the data. That's again a vector. So we need to first four bytes say how long it is. So that's the length of the vector and it's 14 bytes long because zero E is 14. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Perfect. Those 14, that's the data. That's what we write in there. And then comes another byte for the last instruction seal. That's it. Okay, we are getting there, we are getting. We understand now what accounts we need to pass in because they are coming from here. For each of the operations, we need to pass in an account and then, you know, they come with the data associated with it. And that's all put in as instruction data. Okay, that's analyzing this entire program. <laughs> Another hour gone. Now the exploit uses create edit complete and a complete again and then edit again and then seal which means go here we realloc to a given size and then we complete just write some data now is my challenge to find the exploit myself or do i just want to understand the exploit i think i just want to understand the exploit so i'm gonna cheat and read what has been done because I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the realloc, that we realloc twice then. Like this realloc, when it allocates to zero, does it take the sol out? Because essentially we don't do any transfers. Where does it go? It goes to a whole new account. Can I have a negative offset and do a integer overflow essentially? Because my idea would be, set the offset negative such that I write into the Lamperts instead of the data field. How else can I? Because I still don't see how I can get any sol out, except for like, maybe this realloc, if it sets the size to zero, that it removes all the Lamperts as well. But I don't think so. I, like I didn't see realloc do any of that. Okay, let's just try to explain what happens instead of finding the exploit myself. Good, let's see what it does. So 42 we said is the length of this string. Okay, cool, of this vector. So then we have six instructions. First instruction is the create. Okay, so far so good. Second instruction is the edit. Yep, 
a zero one is an edit and edit takes a eight byte integer. So this is the eight byte integer size. Can we have a little engine? So it just allocates one, two, three, a hundred thousand bytes. No, a hundred million bytes. Yeah, because it can, it just allocates a hundred million bytes. Okay, and then it allocates a hundred million bytes. Then it does a complete instruction at offset six, seven, eight. So 10,392 at offset 10,392. It writes the following data, eight bytes of data, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, that's boring. You just write zeros. Oh wait, sorry. This is still the length. And then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Still, you still write zeros. You're writing eight zeros at offset something, something. So first instruction you complete and at offset 10K, you write eight bytes of zeros. Sure, why not? You can do that, I guess. Then you do another two. So another complete with this offset, 20,000 now, 20,700 something. And you write eight bytes. This time you actually write something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Still don't understand how the soul moves from this account to this account. I just don't get it. What is 36 soul? So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three in hex little endian. 68C46108. 68C46108. This thing here is the amount of Lamperts. More specifically, because it's a U64, this here is the amount of Lamperts. Or am I the wrong way around? No, can't be. This here must be the amount of Lamperts. So those eight bytes, oh, my head is in the way. Those eight bytes represent the amount of Lamperts. Now my question is, when we do this writing eight bytes at this offset, why? does it change the amount of Lamperts of a different account? No, wait, is it this account? Wow, is that complicated. But then it makes sense why we would write zeros. On the one we write zero and on the other account we write 36 sol. Now I still don't get the numbers for the offset. Thus far we've just been using we edit it and make it very big such that we can then overwrite stuff. And then we edit it back to 32 bytes and we seal it. Yeah, now it would be good to understand how those things are on storage because it seems to me that when writing, overwriting, this account, the date, the data of this account, we can somehow get into the Lamperts of this account. And then the Lamperts of this account. Two, three, four, five, six. Ah, okay, so no, we always put in this account. So we always work on the same one, but then we just have it, have, two more accounts that we don't work on with those operations. So they are never read with this next account info, 
but somehow they seem to be somewhere in storage, somewhere we, where we can write to with this complete instruction where we write data. If we just have a large enough offset that we write into the Lamport's fields of those other accounts because otherwise I couldn't explain it otherwise. Now let's have a look at how those account infos actually look. Let's check the source. They have their key, is signer, is writable, Lamport's and then data. I could theoretically also then overwrite the owner and have it be set to my program and then I could, you know, use it. But just removing Lamperts is also a strategy. So we had those two numbers almost double, but it's getting in that direction. So there's probably some fixed offset still after our account and then the entire account struct of the others. So this one is getting from this account info into this account info. And then the larger one is getting from, from this account info into this account info. So here we write the zero in Lamperts and here we write the 36 sol in Lamperts. That makes sense. And again, why do we get 0 0.3? Could try and get those out. Yeah, I think I need a break. My brain is already like smoking. <laughs> uh, I, I think I'm on a good path. I, I'm pretty sure I understand what's happening here. We're overwriting the Lampert fields of those two account infos, therefore for the accounts. And we can do that because we write into the data field of this account, but we overflow it because we resized it. And then we resize it back. And don't ask me how that really then works, but like something, something like that. Yeah, I need a break. You know what we're gonna do now? I just installed Anchor and we're gonna actually execute the program because we do have the source code. Let's make ourselves a program and, and run that locally. So Anchor in it, ISTL, I think was the name that we're going to put in source librs. Here you go. Copy the program. Anchor build. Okay, so I guess I need those dependencies as well. There we go. And I'm going to do that again because I added some stuff to the cargo tumble. Uh, oh. Can I wait? Maybe I need to do this then. And we wait another 20 minutes. There we go. Okay. Now deploy. Ha 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 ha. Take bad. I take that. Copy our address in here. Build again. Good. Let's finally deploy this. Cluster local net wallet. We make ourselves another key. What are they called? Something with V. Vanity. Vanity? Vanity. Vanity. Cool. So, local net, that's my wallet. Then let's start a validator. Solana test validator. Initializing. Cool. Then I need a new console. And it'll be like Solana balance. There we go. Ha! For some reason, we already have Sol. That should be should be enough for a start. I don't know how they got here, but hey, they're here. So not even gonna complain. Now, there we go. That seems easy. So the program 1STF is deployed. Cannot find module. <clears throat> Why not? Hey, hey, that's better. Damn it, can somebody explain how to work with Anchor? Ah, wait, but that looks already good. I can just put in the data buffer and then I just need to format my data buffer in a way that works. I think I'm just going to build a manual transaction. Then I have way more freedom to do the stuff I want. Good. Let's build the transaction manually then. Remember, there's a first signer 
Then he wants some list thing. Ah, and for that we first need a system program create account instruction, I guess. So I pay for it. Aha, they renamed it to new account pubkey, not to pubkey anymore. Okay, Lamparts, uh, now I need to calculate rent. Nah, too lazy for that. We'll just take enough. Three sol. Because who cares? I'm rich. And space is 32 bytes. And program ID is... Okay, instruction number one. We create this thing. And then we make another room instruction. So we have one signer. And then for each of the operations, we need the... So we just do one and the instruction data. Well, essentially we just put one byte right because we just do the first instruction, the first operation with that instruction. Let's see if that actually executes. Run. Ah, there we go. 0x64 instruction missing. Oh, of course we didn't provide the instruction. Remember? this whole bunch as the instruction. I mean, I can do this. Ah, oh, there we go. Buffer from and then hex. From this and encoding hex. Then I need the total size. Total size will be another four plus one is five with an offset of eight because we rolled eight bytes already then we write the length of the operations and then at eight plus four plus four we write this zero now <laughs> manually messing with that is so much more fun than trying to get it to work other way instruction fallback not found okay so apparently this doesn't result in the correct thing Ah, I'm writing. Ah, that's why. So first I write one at this location. Yeah, that's looking better from the buffer. That's looking good. Then five, one, and a zero. Looking good to me. And look, we have an actual transaction signature. Let's check what has happened there. This signature, first the system program, and then a create list with our ISDM list and the operation create. So we can call our program score. Now let's build the transaction as we would in a normal sequence. So with the create, then edit, then complete, then seal. Let's work with an offset. That's that. And then an associated constraint was violated. Let's look at the buffer if that looks good in my eyes. So that looks good so far. The thing that does not, it's not correct yet, of course, is that I don't have enough accounts provided because for each of the instruction uh, operations, I need one, two, three, four times the same account again. You can just pass it in like that. And then we'll try that again. Maybe it was that. <laughs> We got it, look at that. We were able to do all of the operations. Create, edit, complete, seal. Nice. Okay, so we can call it manually like this. So with that script, I could theoretically also call it on mainnet. It's a bit complicated, must admit, but you know, I like the freedom to, you know, build my stuff manually and not have to play with this goddamn thing that I don't know how to use. So we stay with that and we now analyze what's actually happening. Going back to actually exploiting this thing. Because we know we can somehow write with an offset that is just really large. If we just provide a very large offset, we can write somewhere. So... Now we need to find out how those accounts are aligned, right? Those accounts that we put in, that it then sees as 
account infos in the program where are they in memory and where where are they placed and can i offset over there so whenever we get one of the next account infos let's do some debugging and be like hey you where are your lamperts and where is your data because i would expect between two accounts there's approximately 10,000 bytes. Just a rough, because those, those are the values that I saw in the offsets in the transaction. There we go, then we can see here that we now have more output. Lamperts here, as one would expect, are just 16 bytes before the data. Yes, that makes sense. So from B to C, is just 0 x 1 0 and that's 16 and 16 wait no that does not make sense 16 bytes is not the length of the lamperts because that's more but let's look at that here lamperts so i would expect eight bytes but maybe there's also another thing between them and it's always the same reference okay Provide another key pair, and that it's a bit, it's a bit useless, but um, so am I. So now we have B, C, three, four, and the difference between those is ten thousand three hundred fifty-two, which we have noted before close is already very close to where we're going and there's just 40 bytes difference and that's probably you know the offset that i already have from the data wait that's the offset i have between data and lamperts the offset i have between lamperts and lamperts let's check that 0x2880 368 then we need to add 16 to get to the data. Actually, it would be minus. Minus 16. Oh, it's an anchor account, right? Does it then do the anchor discriminator? Yeah, yeah, the anchor discriminator of the account. That's 8 bytes. So I need to add another 8 bytes. And then I'm exactly at... 10,392, which is the thing that we saw in the exploit. It's eight plus, it's eight bytes plus the eight bytes that Anchor uses as the discriminator because if I reference the data, that thing, that's already excluding the thing that it uses, like those eight bytes in front of the data. If I have data at spot zero, that's already the ninth byte in the actual data of the Solana account because Anchor uses those eight bytes. Okay, so that makes sense now. Now it makes sense to me why I would have those 16 bytes in difference because eight bytes for the Lamport's amount itself, the U64 plus eight bytes of the Anchor discriminator, of the account discriminator thingy. Okay, we're starting to get there. We're starting to understand this. Okay, that makes sense. Let's put two different keys at the end here. Okay, look at that. So we have this one, and then the next account Lamberts is here, and then the next account Lamberts is here. So let's just calculate the difference between those two. Why? How does that make any sense? They are 2860 together and those were 2880 together. Solana, where do you put those accounts into the memory? This does not make any sense to me. But really, it doesn't need to make sense to me. I just need to know where it is in memory and then I'm good. Because all I really need to know is the difference from my data to this Lamperts field. And if I calculate that, 50E8, 
which in decimal is 27.12. I mean, I know I'm on the heap because like that's 0x4 is where the heap starts. So Lana con firm dash v the signature. So that was one of the accounts that now has three sol in there. And let's hack this one. Let's attempt target target here. Let's actually get the value of the actual Lamparts. That should be the three billion. There we go. Yep. That's the actual value. And let's attempt to write that or overwrite that value. Then the Solana runtime is gonna tsh us for changing sole amounts, but Let's 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 just do it. If I just provide a larger offset in this create and I try to write something there, I don't even need to write Andy U int 64 little Andian value being zero. Or actually to start with 300 Lamperts, lol. Cool. Now, if I want to write that that offset, then obviously this check is gonna kick my ass and be like constraint associated. So I'm expecting a 0x79. Hey, <laughs> there. Offset is too big. Result is sum is false. So there's just a none as a result. So, but it still says, okay, cool fine with me we see that it just tries to make it difficult for us that we hit this offset too big but obviously the offset was too big now what can we do in order for the offset not to be too big well obviously in the edit create a bit more space here instead of the my length do a fake length 30 thousand reallocate to 30,000 can I run this um, but result is still none why in edit already ah there realloc error account data reallocation was invalid oh well that's not saying a lot invalid let's just try 300 would that be valid Yes, reallocation, okay, but then offset too big again. So I need at least this. And again, account data reallocation was invalid. Should we look at the attack again, how much it reallocates? I think it reallocated like a lot, like a lot. What's the size it reallocated to? I just write we still get a realloc error. Why? Probably because it needs to be big enough in the beginning. No. How big is it in the beginning? At the 32 bytes. Could it be that an older Solana version allowed that and now they don't allow it? Maybe. Maybe that's why they were so hardcore on the, it could be. Let's use exactly the version that they use. Exactly the versions that they use. Good time to take a break. So different anchor version, build and deploy, run my app. And that's different now though, because now it fails. Transaction simulation failed already. Failed to reallocate account data. Ha! But here it said realloc okay. So there must be or there must have been an error in a previous Solana program version because in this version the error still exists. So that's also part of the exploit that we have a too old Solana version. It doesn't check for that. 
which version are we at now? We are now at 114.13 and this is 1.9. So it is old, but it might still be in use. Like at that very program. Just a note for you to keep your programs up to date with new Solana versions to increase security. Anyhow, now here the realloc still says it's okay, but then in the very end, somehow the transaction simulation failed because we can't reallocate account data. Apparently that realloc was too big. But that's exactly why we have a second edit coming in. Hold my beer. I'm smiling now because I'm making progress. So we are going to add another edit. After the create, before the seal, another edit. And we set it to just 32 bytes. And then we just need to change a few values like number of operations here. We now have five operations. Okay, let's see. But hey, boom. Okay, let's look at this. Let's look at this because it goes through. It says my realloc is okay. And then I write, then I attempt to realloc to 32 bytes. Realloc is okay. And result is sum is false. So my data is here and I want to write it into here. Oh, is that why the seal does? Ah, that's why the seal doesn't work. Ah, right, 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 right. Because if I have another operation, I of course need to also provide this public key one more time in the accounts. Oh, that's better. So yeah, then it comes back with some true. Hey, <laughs> hey, perfect. Now it works because I provide the correct accounts. So that's still my correct accounts. Now in my case, the offset was not correct though. So let's use the values that I would use and not what I have stolen from Explorer. It's again a different value now, what the hell? Now it's 2890. Is that different every time depending on where, how many accounts I put in and stuff? So it's really hard to hit that one right. But anyway, in my mathematics, I would now take this, that number. So that's from my data to the Lamperts, right? I took data to Lamperts, data to Lamperts. And I would just subtract 32 because 32 is already in the start of the data. Leaves me with this value. And I'm just gonna try and put this value in my attack script and see what happens. Yes, it fails. <laughs> I love it. Because that's what I would expect. If it fails for the same reason, ho ho, I mean, not for the reason that I hoped that it would fail, but transaction simulation failed, processing instruction one, instruction illegally modified the program ID of an account. So we are already getting there. I illegally modified the program ID of an account. So where did I write to? probably in here. So, you know, I'm off a bit. Hmm. Okay, this guessing game is not fun. Data, borrow mutable, offset. Oh wait, so the offset doesn't even include the 32. It's just offset. So wait, 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 then I just don't need the minus. Three. It is just that, that. So this is gonna work now. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, this is so gonna work. I mean, not work, but hit the Lamperts. Yes. I hit something. Yes. That's actually, why do I do so much calculating around and 
trying to fit the... No, the, it was already correct. Damn it. Anyway. Okay, so we note the offset did not take this header thing into account and it was just always the offset. It just needs to be larger than 32 and it starts at zero. Anyway, so it starts directly at the data. So that is the actual offset that we need. And if we provide that offset, which is different to the one that the guy provided in his attack because I am off by eight bytes, yep. Don't ask me what that eight byte difference is, but it is an eight byte difference. And now if I do that, I set the value to 300. <laughs> Now there's only 300 Lamperts left in this account. Oh, poor you has only 300 Lamperts left in their account. Um, however, this means that the Solana runtime will tsh us and not allow this transaction because I just killed some soul and it doesn't like that. Also, if I make up some soul, it also doesn't like that. So the sums of all account balances must match. Well, that's easy enough to change, right? We just put in a different account where we add Solana to. Also needs to be an account that the program owns because otherwise we can't write to it. But the program just needs to own it. We can still have the private key for it. It doesn't need to be a PDA. It just needs to be owned by the program. We can still sign for it if we have the key. So we just need to make yet another one of those key pairs, but actually remember the private key this time. Then we have the funds key, funds key. And we put in the funds key here at the end. Pretty sure it needs to be owned by the... No, bullshit. We read that anybody can increase the amount of Lamperts on any account. Did I just read that? I think I just read that, right? While a program may read any part of the global heap, if a program tries to write to a part of the heap that is not there, the Solana runtime makes the transaction fail. There's one exception to this, which is increasing the balance of an account. So can I increase the balance of any account without owning it? Let's try. Let's just put this key here. And one more time, give me the difference difference that's where I want to write to and that's where I am 21024 which is different than this but whatever we use what we have here now we need yet another instruction with this offset that value here and we just write eight bytes that's okay and we write you know what this and that the other one we write zero. We want to take all of their Lamperts. The sum of both of those just needs to be this number because that's what the other account holds. And I think that's already it. Oh, wait, no, I need to push in one more time this account because I have one more instruction now. Will that go through now? This guy still has this amount, but I'm also reading the wrong account and we're failing because illegally modified the program ID of an account again. Damn it. Let's use the same value again, just to check. No, now we're also writing illegally into a program ID. Why? What is different now? Oh, I have one more account. And then the offsets might be different. So I need to recalculate my offsets. I don't know how they write it exactly, but okay, let's calculate it again then. So we are here and we want to write into here. One more time, what is the difference? Now it's again a different value. What, I, what? Another account, I like, I really want to find out why or what that is, but look, now that's the same as here. Now it is that offset. I don't know why. I, I do not. I do not know why. They're not equally spaced between each other. Okay, good.
good so just provide the right offset then this is the offset for that and for the other thing is from the data to those lamperts this amount this amount which coincidentally oh no this one is not the same as here let's see when using those values if that works now it does and the value here is zero i have overwritten the lamperts and now I can go here and be like Solana balance of this funds. This guy now has three sol. <laughs> and I could be like transfer from here uh, to, I don't know, I'll transfer it back because I'm a nice guy. I transfer it back to do the same exploit again to our, where did we have it? Target. And I have insufficient funds because I need to pay for it. Okay, fine. Then I just transfer, I don't know, two sol. Oh, sorry, my bad. 2.5 sol. Okay, that works. Cool. My balance is just 0 0.5. Oof, but now it's getting complicated. If I want to do the attack again and I'm not zero, then I need to sum it all up to something different, blah, 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 blah. Better use a new key. But anyway, the exploit work, that's the whole point of this just being that because I have the key, I can now transfer that to wherever, right? This is my wallet. And the program didn't even need to own this account to send funds to this key. So all good, all good. There is one last thing that I need to do right now, though. Do this whole thing on mainnet. Yes. Because that's why we're doing this whole thing to exploit that thing on mainnet. Because, I mean, local, so far so good. But actually exploiting on mainnet, maybe a bit more difficult. But also more fun and exciting. So should I take a break first? Meanwhile, I have grinded myself a key that starts with Andy because I want everybody to know that it's been me who's been hacking here. We set the config to main net. This key, this URL. We're going live, baby. We're going live. And the program ID is this one. Okay, let's go through it. 32 bytes, but let's not be wasteful. How much rent do we need for 32 bytes? This much. Let's not overdo this. I don't want to pay unnecessarily much. Program ID, then buffer size, da 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 This is all good, all good, all good. Which account are we actually hacking? Let's start here. How about the hacker's account? Because the hacker's account also still has 0 0.3 sol in there. And 0 0.3 sol, a 0 0.3 sol. I take it. <laughs> and it's owned by that program. I am going to copy this so this will be my target list key can also obviously not be well I can, it can be a new key pair that's fine but you know what i don't want to seal it just in case i need to on the other hand with the ceiling we know the the account so let's seal it doesn't matter doesn't matter i can afford to create yet another one remember we have 0 0.3 sol on there so it's pretty much the same example that I had before, just a zero less, All right? So it's not three sol, but 0 0.3. So I, I will leave the offsets the same and see if that works. And then here, I'll just put one zero less. Here, write zero and here, write 0 0.3 sol. And the rest I leave the very same. This is my target. And then we do this. Except first we need some actual soul on my wallet because for now I'm broke. I'm also broke if I put like something in there. But where do I find some soul? Where do I find some actual soul? Here, I have something here. 0 0.00. 3. To this guy. Send. I love Solana. This is... So ridiculously fast. I fucking love it. And it's here. Bam. Okay, okay, okay. There's not much that I can lose, right? 
so let's just run on mainnet. It's not gonna work first time. That's very unlikely. Yeah. But hey, it went through up until the seal. But sum of all account balances before and after instruction do not match. So I don't manage to, to write onto the correct spaces. Well, maybe for them, their program in the heap is different for whatever reason. Let's use the same values as the attacker used. So I think the first one was the same. First one was the same, but the second one, this is different. So for whatever reason, let's use this one as well and try this out. I want your 0 0.3 sol. Ah, failed to reallocate account data. Damn it. What do I reallocate it to? I mean, it goes through all the steps. This is getting too hot. Let me check if this thing also is on DevNet. On DevNet, this program also exists, also been exploited. See, 0 0.3, because on DevNet I have more soul, that's why. Let's, and the only thing we change, this is our target, and the rest stays the same. We go to DevNet and we airdrop us on soul, perfect. And then we run the DevNet story. How does that look now? There, now we also get a fail to reallocate account data. Okay, is it because we need more soul on the account? Just a regular question, no. So that doesn't change anything. Still fail to reallocate account data. Ay, 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 ay. The weird thing is though, it literally worked if I had another account in there. And if I pass in as the target a random account, yeah, then it suddenly works. Doesn't make sense. It does not make sense in my head. I don't get it. What if I put my account first? Let's try it on def uh, local net first. And now I just change this and I give it up first the funds that I increase and then my target because then I'm independent of the size of the data of the target. I just have this size. Let's see what that changes or if that changes anything. And then of course in my exploit I would need to first write here I would need to write zero and up here I need to write 2.5. Some of all balances do not match because now probably one of the offsets is different. Let's check them because here I can, here I can look into the those fields. So from my data to your Lamparts, that one didn't change. And then from my data to your Lamparts, kind of also looks like it didn't change, but it did. This is now 27 to 8. Completely different value again. 27 to 8. I take it. If I run it now, spent from the balance of an account it does not own. Oh wow. It really doesn't own this one. Right. Because it's now owned by the system program. Ah. Man, of course. God damn it. God damn it. God damn it. God. Damn it, because when I sent Sol there, it had zero, and then I sent some there, and then it's owned by the system program, because the system program reclaimed it. Ah, oh, well, that makes sense. Okay, so then let's give me another note, please. Let's use that as our target then, and it's supposed to have three Sol on there. How about we take off two and leave one? Would that work then? Yes, now my exploit works again. Confirm this one. I see that I got two out and from the three, there's just one here. Yeah, that worked. So I can also provide those accounts in the different order. What is the issue then mainnet? Probably just don't have the right values here. Illegal modified program ID of an account. Okay, I've seen that before because now I'm just at the wrong 
spot. But what if I switch the accounts? So that was the idea. We can switch them. Is now the offset correct? Transaction results in an account without insufficient funds for rent. Without insufficient funds for rent. Without insufficient funds for rent. Do you mean without sufficient funds for rent? <laughs> Is that what we're saying? Without insufficient <laughs> funds for rent. Are you sure that's the error? Is that maybe? Please don't use double negatives. So account zero, what do I leave it with? Ah, yeah, if I pay, if I pay for that transaction, then I don't have enough funds on here anymore. Okay, damn it. I'm just gonna send more funds. That's enough to stay afloat, my friend. I'm so greedy. <laughs> I don't want to send you more. Now you should be good, right? Yeah, now I have 003. Okay, now let's try that again. If that is really the last error. No. Leaves an account zero with insufficient funds for rent. Maybe I just did not wait enough. Because I'm pretty sure that I can leave the other account without insufficient Still doesn't make any sense in my head, but whatever. Now that we've waited a bit more and you're up to date, now it's looking better. Look at that, look at that. Look at that. I'm already getting super greedy for those 0 0.3 sol. Come on. <gasps> Ooh, look at this transaction. Look, look, look. Looky, looky, look, I paid for something and I did this transaction. And looky, look, this transaction took 0 0.3 sol and from here to my funds. <laughs> yes, the exploit worked. It just took me like six plus four, a bit over 10 hours, but I made it work. I made it work on mainnet, fucking kid. So I can't really explain to you why exactly we need those offsets, those offsets. This just it, it still doesn't, I like, I can't explain it. I can tell you how I got there, you know, by checking uh, where the pointers of the Lampert's field and the data fields live and then subtracting those values. But can I explain to you why they're there? No, we, I, I would need to study how the validators put their stuff in the heap. And that's just way too technical for me still. But hey, I made it work. I finally exploited that. That stupid program. And my funds by the system program now have 0 0.3. Now I'm getting greedy. Look at me, look at me. What other accounts do you have for me? I'm gonna check everything there is. This one has 79 bytes. So probably potentially a different offset, but let's see. That is my target. I write. 0 0.6 on this one and 0 on the other because obviously the sum needs to match again. You think that would work? You think I still have enough sol? I hope so for yet another account. Yeah, look at that. And now I refresh this and it also got drained <laughs> in this transaction where I removed 0 0.3 here, added 0 0.3, so I have 0 0.6. Nice, anybody else that I can exploit? Already exploited you, you're already gone. 0 0.3, 99 bytes, seven days ago. I mean, might as well, right? While we're at it. See, they have different amounts of bytes, but since I do my transaction before, like I have my account before the other one, 
I don't care how many bytes they have because their data field is after that. So I don't need to take that into account, which is great. Uh, now this is complicated again, right? But anyway, it's just complicated, not impossible. Let's do 0 0.3 plus current balance. I could just read that, but like 0, 0.0 increasing difficulty. <laughs> this is so fun. I like hacking, even though I only get one soul out of this. And one soul for like 10 hours of work is really bad pay, but it's about the learning. It's about the learning that I got to do here. And I guess I learned a lot. I hope you also learned something watching me doing this. I hope I edit this at some point. <laughs> look, look how nice those transactions go through. And those accounts just been drained. Just drained. Look at it. It's drained. <laughs> yeah, there were more accounts, right? More accounts. One more time. Music's got me feeling so free. Celebrate and dance so free. One more time. I think that's it then. <laughs> and it's gone. Gone, gone. Bye bye. Yep. Took me a while. Took me a while. But I made it. Oh, is that another one? Oh, it's another one. While we're here, might as well drain everything. There we go. Done. Let's move all the funds over. It's a nice number. It's nice to have predictable transaction fees. That makes it much more easy to clear out an account. Because if we have variable transaction fees, then this could be annoying. If there's a little bit of soul left on the account and then it tells you, huh, but it, there's not enough soul on the account to be rent exempt, so you're not allowed to do that. This is super annoying. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting with the variable fees. There's a proposal for that. Anyway, that's a whole different story. I made one and a half sol today. Nice. Nice. Totally pays off this hacking. I will not write that as tax income. This is way too exhausting. It's just, that's a donation that I received. Almost 40 euros. Not bad. Uh, dollars. Still not bad. Could have had 36 sol, but I was too slow. Way too slow. But at least I made it in the end that was that was important for my psychological well-being to have finally manage <laughs> ah it's nice to do some hacking it's fun it's fun you learn stuff it is exhausting as well and partly really depressing if you can't make progress but uh we managed in the end so to recap what did we do we found the source code, we analyzed the source code and changed it a bit. And really the essential parts here, so the exploit really is just that you can do a realloc in an old Solana version, in this version specifically, you can realloc. And if you realloc back to a smaller size in the same transaction, then it doesn't really check that you have enough rent on that account and it doesn't check where you're writing to. So it doesn't really check the bounds of this. If this realloc is too big, if this realloc would, you know, go outside and be part of some other data in the heap like accounts. So essentially by then specifying an offset that is just large enough to write into the Lamport's fields of one of the accounts that is passed in, we can change that Lamport amount with this complete operation. And if we are doing it right, providing our account down here to write a positive number into the Lamport's field and then subtracting that positive number from the Lamport's that is in the account that we're hacking so that is that needs to be owned by the program the list program and we just changed the lamport values by writing to the right position so you just need to find out the offset that was for me the hardest part finding that offset but yeah 
it's not an overflow in that sense. It's just a data overflow because the bounce is not che checked, but the uh, it's not an integer overflow as I thought in the beginning. But no, that's not the case. If we could have a negative offset, we could have put in an account here and then written to the Lamports field, but no, we can't do that. We can only write to after after our account. So we just need to provide the accounts later. But that worked. That's pretty cool. And that's the that's the entire thing really. It's that this realloc didn't do proper checks. It does now with a newer Solana version. So this exploit does not work in the current version anymore. I assert, I'm not 100% sure, but it, it didn't work in, in the version I was using. So yeah, maybe I just didn't do it right. Who knows? So yeah, I just want you to remember, stay up to date with your Solana version and treat your program like a hacker. You want to exploit your own programs and you want to exploit other people's programs just to learn. Do white hat hacking though and, uh, and don't actually steal their funds if they don't allow you to because that could have legal consequences. I'm not a lawyer, but I need to tell you that uh, this could go wrong for you. So please don't. Also, not financial advice. Don't make your money by exploiting others. There were way better ways, I hope. At least I tell myself. So yeah, I hope that you had fun watching me do this hackers challenge from Ottersack. Thank you so much, Ottersack, for actually putting out that challenge and putting the funds there for us to hack them. And what else do you need to say? This was a very technical video like very at the border of my knowledge i i hit a wall and then i learn try and figure it out try and figure it out and i still don't know all of the things i, I still struggle explaining this in detail i can just give you the gist of it which is we are writing to a field far off in the heap and change the lamperts but yes this video has been very technical if you want something less technical and uh, more more basic to learn check out those videos like this video subscribe i put out videos every week and we do fun stuff like hacking challenges if you know about other capture the flags or other security challenges hacking challenges please let me know tag me on twitter and i would love to check those out too right but now gotta go to sleep it has been a long day i thought oh I'll be done with this in two hours. <laughs> right? That's how it goes. But we made it! <clears throat> yeah!